Do we like it? Yes and no. In this video, I'm going to go through all the details about how Knockgrasses from Adam to Us works and why it didn't work for our family. And also, I'm going to take, take you through a thorough look through of the program so that you can decide whether or not to try from Adam to Us for yourself or not. Welcome or welcome back. And in case you're new here, I'm Yuri. I'm a dentist and a homeschool mom to five kids that are in the preschool through this grade seven. And we are nearing the end of our ninth year of homeschooling. I've actually already shared a video about not grasses from Adam to us last April when we were deciding to go with the program. But I wanted to make this follow up video in order to show a fuller picture of what we think about the program after having had more experience with the program. And I'll have the video from last April linked down below in the description in case you're interested in seeing that one. After hearing so many great reviews and things about Knockgrass, I was totally excited to try from Adam to us because we were coming from having done history with a classical approach. And I wanted to find a program that had American history, government, economics, and geography in the high school levels so that it will be easier to figure out and give out credits. I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera around so that I can share with you from Adam to us. Knockgrass's history programs are literature-based and for the most part open and go. They are Christian like Mystery of History and Master Books history programs. But unlike Mystery of History, it's more like Master Books in how you address history in a sort of a, like a unit study approach but separated into topics. For instance, you might have a program from Knockcrest just on American history, or in this case, world history. You might have government and etc. A nice thing about Knockcrest is that you can get history, literature, and Bible all from just one program. Because Living Books are a focus, Knockgrass is quite Charlotte Mason. And like I said, From Adam to Us addresses world history and is recommended for grades five to eight. And as you can see, consists of two textbooks, the volume one, or part one, and part two. So if you look inside with me, let me move this second one away. If you look inside, Okay, you can see here in the table of contents that there are a total of 15 units. And so each, each of the textbooks includes 15 units. So making it a, a total of 30 units. And so each unit has five lessons. The one, two, three, four, five. And the program can be stretched over two years if you cover two to three lessons per week. But if you could potentially tackle these two big parts in one year, if you do all five lessons in a week. Now for us, trying to get through both volumes or both parts in one year was a little too much because we're trying to get through the program as a family. But we have chosen to do about two to three lessons a week. So technically this would have taken us a good two years to get through. And remember there are 30 units between the two parts, the two volumes. And so that is roughly about 30 weeks if you tackle both of the volumes in one year. We unfortunately had to stop early on in the program because most of our kids weren't so engaged with the text. I mean, the pictures are gorgeous and, and phenomenal and I love them. But for some reason, we couldn't really engage with the text. Even though Mr. and Mrs. Knockgrass did a great, phenomenal job 
and had the intention of writing to the reader in more of like a storytelling style. We felt that the text was a little dry and actually more factual than we would like. And I really, really wanted to make this program work and fell in love with the approach of the program. And we even purchased the audio MP3 read by Mrs. Nutgrass, but we weren't engaging with her reading. So in the end, I ended up reading the text out loud to the kids. And this just kind of gives you an idea of what the part one looks like in general. I mean, you can see there's so many wonderful, beautiful pictures that are vivid, and it makes you feel like you were there in that particular region, like in Greece. And we actually visited Greece while we were living in Europe. And I mean, this brings back a lot of memories for me. I don't know if it does so much for the kids, but I really enjoyed being able to see a lot of the landmarks that we had come across while we were overseas. And this just kind of gives you a rough idea. Here's Jerusalem. So. Just kind of going through it a little bit to show a general idea. With that said, I do, however, love how Adam to us is organized. So Mr. and Mrs. Nakras have made the program so simple and clear and straightforward. And if you go to the end of the lessons, you'll see that there are assignments that you can choose to do. You can pick and choose to cover. So of course you don't have to do go through all of these assignments in the program. So it's kind of like a buffet, right? You can sort of pick and choose and depending on what your family can handle or what your student can handle. And so, it, for instance, if you decide not to include the literature or the Bible component from the program, those are easy to leave out. And so I mainly chose from Adam to us for the history and the geography. And you can, as you can see here, not every lesson even has the geography. So in this lesson, we uh, don't have the uh, map work. So if, if you go to another lesson, I think it'll be the next one. Oh, or maybe not. <laughs> maybe the next one after that. Sorry, we live on base, on a military base, and you could hear the sirens go off at noon on every Saturday because we get a lot of tornadoes where we live. So if you can hear the sirens, I'm sorry about it. And so here's, here's a lesson that has some map work. And you would just basically go to that lesson's map work. And our family typically gets many of these other components in this program in other ways. So we decided not to include the Bible, even the vocabulary or writing, and even the literature components from the program. Although we did read some of the books, like Linda Sue Park's A Single Shard Out Loud. And my favorite happens to be the map work that's included in the program. So you get a workbook like this, and it has all your maps. And to me, the map work from Nakras was probably the best map work we ever have ever tried with a history program. And we thought it was well done and it helped to solidify the geography component of history. Let me show you an example. So, so I pretty much photocopied 
the map pages from this workbook. And here I'm going to show you an example of the map work that we did for the Caribbean Sea. So here's an example. So I like that all you have to do is go to this page that's next to the maps in the map workbook, and it'll tell you exactly what to do. It'll say to draw waves in the Caribbean Sea. And you find that on the Caribbean Sea, and then you draw some waves, and then you might have to draw some arrows depending on what the directions tell you to do. And also some little ships. So it kind of helps us solidify what you learned in the lessons. So we really enjoyed the map work from Notgrass. And in my opinion, history and geography are like a horse and carriage. You can't have one without the other. So that's pretty much how the map work goes. And it's not for every lesson, like I said. So it's probably every maybe three lessons or so you'll get a map work. So I love that you can cater the program to meet your child's needs. So you might have all these different components that I'm going to go over better in detail. So there's a book called Our Creative World and also the timeline book and oops, sorry and also an answer key for everything and a student workbook or lesson review. So I talked to the company, some representatives from the company, and they let me know that the student workbook and the lesson review books are optional. And the student workbook is intended for grades five to six, and the lesson review book is intended for grades seven to eight. And we went with the student workbook because of the fun activities in it. At the end of the parts, part one and part two, you'll find the unit family activities. So that's how that looks. Okay. And okay, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the part two. Like I said, this program is so easy to follow. And each unit is divided up into those five lessons. And all you have to do is go to the end of the lesson and follow the suggested assignments. And this assignments may vary from lesson to lesson. For instance, this first lesson in unit 16 covers a reading from our creative world, map work, and timeline, student workbook. So that was the student workbook or lesson review book. And then the Bible. And here's a nice Bible verse to go with the lesson. Every lesson ends with a Bible verse. And then you have literature. Basically, you'll be reading one of the 10 books that are assigned or chosen for this program. And it'll tell you exactly what chapters to read at the end of each lesson. And then you ha might have a family activity found at the end of the book. Okay. Yes, here it is. So you go here to find the instructions for that activity for the family. And so then while the next lesson in that same unit cover, may cover some different aspects. So let's see. Again, we're going to read a, an excerpt from our creative world. And then go through the timeline this time. And then we'll have a, a page from the student workbook or lesson review book. Then now we have some vocabulary that we will be focusing on from the lesson. And then we have creative writing. And then to top it off, we have literature. So you can see that from lesson to lesson, the assignments may differ slightly. 
So some of the assignments you won't be doing every lesson include map work, creative writing, vocabulary, thinking biblically, or a family activity. Just to give you an idea of what the part two looks like in more detail, I'm just going to flip some pages so you can see a little more of the details. So again, you're going to get all these gorgeous pictures, gorgeous images. So to start every unit, there's always like a brief overview of what that unit's going to cover and what literature, what book we're going to be reading out of the 10 books that are assigned for the program. So that's pretty much how it's laid out. Very simple and clear. And wonderfully done. Okay, so so here's our creative world book, and I wanted to kind of just show you what it looks like on the inside. It basically includes like letters, stories, art, even games, sports, recipes, poems, and speeches, structures like buildings, and memories related to the region or people to enrich the lessons. And I was so excited for this book because I thought, oh man, that is so cool to be able to see and learn something outside of your textbook. But it was a little bit of a letdown and it wasn't as engaging as I had expected. But I shouldn't have been too surprised since most of the writings are in like an old style in language from, you know, the past. <laughs> and usually a lot of the, the older language can sound a little more on the drier side. So, but overall it was pretty cool. But the writing wasn't, it was kind of hard to follow along. But it's a really neat aspect, and I love that. Okay, so that's kind of a gist of the creative, our creative world. And of course, if you guys want to see any more thorough looks into any of these books, I can do a total flip through of them. The timeline book is super easy to fill out, and you can pretty much find exactly what to do by looking at the end of your lessons in your textbook. For instance, here at the end of lesson 76, it says, in the box for lesson 76 on page 18, write, Mansa Musa makes a pilgrimage to Mecca. So then you would go to page 18 of your timeline. So it's, it's not your typical cut and paste or stick on images. In this timeline book, you write a fact from that lesson. So you go to Lesson 76's section and write down, Mansa Musa makes a pilgrimage to Mecca. Pretty simple, clear, cut. And you can also color these pictures that are on the various pages. And this timeline book doesn't have any writing in it because I think I grabbed the one that hasn't been written in. I do have another one that we did write in. So pretty much looks like that. And optional are the student workbook and lesson review book. I mentioned it already a little bit before. The student workbook 
is intended for grades five to six and consists of all kinds of fun activities. Like you have fill in the blank, crossword puzzles, some different decoding activities and word searches. You get to choose, choose from a few options and you have matching, unscrambling. So that's pretty much how it is laid out. And I really like this student workbook. It's well done and I feel like it really helped to understand the lessons better. Because there's so many things that we didn't catch while we were reading the lessons. While we were reading, reading the lessons from the textbook. So the student workbook is, to me, vital and helpful. But it, it is an optional workbook. Well, actually, any of these assignments are optional, right? It's like a buffet. You can shoot, pick and choose. But I really like the student workbook. And towards the end of the student workbook, you're going to find the unit tests. And this is where you, I, I would just basically print them out. But after a while, instead of having all my kids do their own test worksheet, I ended up just doing it out loud. After a few of the units, it looks like for the first one, up to unit five, you're going to have questions about the literature, about the book that was assigned for, that, for those units. Here's another page with questions about one of the books. Uh, it's pretty much laid out like that where you have some tests and you have questions from the literature that are assigned. So the difference with the lesson review book, I saw some of the sample pages which you can find on the website. The lesson review book consists of a bunch of lesson review questions rather than all these games. Right. So I don't have the lesson review book to show you because I didn't purchase that one. And of course, the lesson review book will also have questions about the assigned literature. So it's pretty much a bunch of questions in the lesson review book. And the answers to everything are in your answer key book. And of those 10 books, we have read The Single Shard, which was phenomenal. One of the other books that is assigned is The Bronze Bow. And I have yet to read that one, but our seventh grader read it on her own. And she thought it was a little dry and on the harder side to understand and comprehend. But even with that, but even if you don't use Knockgrass for the literature, Knockgrass does provide a great book list if you're looking for some great books. And let me go back to one of these lessons in the, in the text because it will talk about doing vocabulary. Here we go. Here's one. So here's a vocabulary assignment. And all the answers are included in your answer key. So here are the answers in the answer key for lesson 77. However, we didn't focus much on the vocabulary since we get vocabulary in other areas of our homeschool. For us, creative writing was the same. We could have written a short story that takes place in a castle, but we didn't have time to include the writing component. And also, our kids have separate writing programs anyway. I'm just going to quickly show you a little of the answer key. So like I said, the answer key pretty much provides all the answers to your assignments.
Here you have your answers for your vocabulary and thinking biblically lessons. And then so pretty much it's the vocabulary and thinking biblically sections at first. And then you have the entire vocabulary word list. And the pages, they are found in the textbooks. That's a lot of vocabulary words you're going to be getting to cover. And then here you have all the lesson review answers. And the student workbook answers. All the timeline entries, including the page number for the timeline book. And then finally, at the very back are the notes to the parents on the 10 literature readings. And that's pretty much what the answer key looks like. So Notgrass provides all sorts of free resources online, making the program more robust. And so if you go to their website, you can access free downloads under the bonus downloads. So I would go down to whichever program you're using. And in this case, we're using from Notgrass to us. Oh, sorry, from Adam to us. And you can see all these bonus downloads. Let me go back up here to show you. So you can get lesson assignment checklist, which are great if you are the kind of person who likes to check things off. And it's great for the student if he or she is doing the program on her own. And she can go ahead and after she does an assignment, she can check it off and give her a sense of completion. And a way to be able to manage her time and learn to be more organized. So this is just a quick view of the lesson assignment checklist. And every assignment, every lesson has a checklist like this that you can get from the website and just print for free. And here's a shorter version of the same thing. The other one had like more instructions. This one's just more of a, like, just the main bullet points of what you had covered or what the student covers. Okay, and then there's even a grading chart that's really helpful if you are having to grade your student and figure out. So they provide a lot of resources that will help you to figure out even how to record keep if you need to keep a record. Oh, here's the answer key. I'm not sure what this is about. I wonder if this is the same. Oh, look at this. And this might be the answer key. The same thing as this book, the answer key. So I'm just going to double check and make sure it's the same exact. Curious. I just now am looking, seeing this. So yeah, I mean, so far it looks the same. So I'm I'm guessing the answer key is provided online, so you don't really need to purchase this book unless you'd like to. Yeah, looks the same. Yeah, great. Okay, and this one is alternate literature selections for From Adam to Us. So if you didn't care for the 10 literature books that are recommended for the program there are other books that you can choose from so this is where you can find them so we happen to have door in the wall chrisman cross of the lead navy and number the stars so we may get to those eventually 
So it's kind of nice to know that, you know, we have these other options. And this one is a comparison between exploring world history and from Adam to us. Because exploring world history is a high school level, level of the world history, while the, from Adam to us is middle school. So this kind of just goes over what the differences are. Oh, I like this, actually. This little PDF is nice because if you are record keeping, you could just use this page because it already includes what the course description is and everything you need to know, the publisher, the title of the book, everything, and what the scope and sequence and the content of the program include. And you could just use this for your records. I thought that was really helpful. So there's also some supplements. These supplements are actually kind of nice because for every lesson, there are extra materials that are resources that you can try to use. For instance, I'm just going to click on one. The supplement provides some coloring pages for your student, especially if you have younger kids. You might be able to get some coloring pages that are recommended. There we go. And then you can easily just print them out. So you can, as you can see, there is so much material, so much that this program offers. some units include supplemental family activities and this is where you'll find them so I did print out them but we actually didn't really get to them because we already had so much just from the textbook and doing the student workbook and the timeline and the maps so we were already getting a robust experience with the program. I printed them out, but I never had to use them, or I never got to them, actually. Okay, and then at the bottom of this page shows you that there are a few errors, but they were corrected, but sh the corrections are shown online. So here are the corrections. And luckily, there are only three corrections that had to be made. So I went ahead and went to those lessons and made those corrections in, my, in the program. So one of them was from the textbook, this one. And then there was one that needed to be corrected from the student workbook. And then one from the map. So it's just very minor corrections. But there are some corrections that need to be made. So... If you do get the program, make sure to go fix those. And lastly, I see here this co-op tips. So the program is intended for individual families, but Notgrass does encourage community and gives help where you need it. This link is helpful for co-ops to know what they would need to go through the program together. And what you can do, and how you can how you can approach this program as a co-op. Nakras is so community focused. If you click on this, you can see that they have daily encouragement. I don't know what that looks like. So here's some daily encouragement. There is a podcast for Nakras. The community page where you can because you can find them in so many different social media platforms like Facebook Instagram Pinterest YouTube so Notgrass is very much wanting to build a community 
So as you can see, there's so much that Knockgrass has to offer, even just online. However, after having gone through several units of the program, we have decided that from Adam to us, it's not the best fit for a large family with multiple ages, with mixed ages. It's no wonder the program is intended for grades five to eight. Our seventh grader had voiced that she wasn't getting much out of the program when we were doing it together as a family. So we made the switch for her to work on from Adam to us on her own. And after we made that switch, she appreciated the program so much more and she has come to love the program. She's an avid reader, so she has no problem getting through the program without any help and without trouble. But I can already tell that for our upcoming middle schoolers, they may have a little more difficulty because the program is a little intense for them to go through on their own. So would we use From Adam to Us again? As of right now, no. The program is overall phenomenal and I love the organization. And fortunately, our seventh grader can handle the program on her own. And she is enjoying and actually loving the program now that she's being able to do it by herself. But I can't foresee our uprising middle schoolers to be able to handle the program on their own. If you want a robust literature-based Christian history program and your student is literarily strong, Knock Grasses from Adam to Us will probably be a great fit. But if you need a gentle program, this program may not be the best fit for your student. We have decided to continue where we left off in volume two of Mr. of History, and our seventh grader sits in with us when we do Mr. of History as a family together, and that's actually been working out great. I hope this was helpful for you in deciding what's going to work for your family. And if you've tried any of the Knockgrass programs, please share in the comments on how it went for your student. And if you know of any great high school level history programs, please share that as well. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And we would love to have you back. Have a great day and see you in the next video.